ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-amuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we really invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we really invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire my dear brothers and sisters in Islam I want you to listen attentively to these reminders and apply them to your life to your family to your community your brothers and sisters in Islam and to the ummah at large while keeping in mind the present day situation that our ummah is facing an abi hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tahasadu wa la tanajashu wa la tabaghadu wa la tadabaru wa la wa la yab' ba'dukum ala bay'i ba'd wa kunu 'ibad Allah ikhwana al muslim akhu al muslim la yaghlamuhu wa la yakhdhuluhu wa la yakdhibhu wa la yakdhibuhu ولا يحكره التقوى ها هنا ويشير الى صدره ثلاث مرات بحسب امرئ من الشر ان يحقر اخاه المسلم كل المسلم على المسلم حرام دمه وماله وعرضه رواه مسلم ابو هريره رضي الله عنه هنا ريسه مسجد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said do not envy one another do not inflate prices upon one another do not hate one another do not turn away from one another do not undercut one another in trade but rather be slaves of Allah be brothers and sisters amongst yourselves a muslim is a brother of a muslim the muslim does not oppress his brother he does not fail his brother he does not lie to his brother He does not hold his brother in contempt, yani make him feel worthless or make him feel beneath you. Taqwa ha huna, taqwa, fearing Allah, keeping your duty to Allah, acting in a way of obedience so you put a barrier between yourself and Allah's punishment. Ha huna. And the Prophet ﷺ, he pointed to his heart, to his chest three times. He pointed there three times. He said it is evil enough for a man to hold his brother in contempt again to make him feel beneath you the whole of a muslim is inviolable for another muslim his property his blood and his honor Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu in another narration he mentions that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said iyyakum mudhan fa inna dhan akthab al hadith ولا تجسسوا ولا تنافسوا ولا تدابروا ولا تحاسدوا ولا تداغضوا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا شيخ الألباني authenticated this hadith from Abu Huraira that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said beware of suspicion don't have suspicion over one another because it is the worst type of lying do not spy looking for each other's faults 
Do not fight or argue with one another. Do not try to ensnare the another in sales, meaning try to undercut your brother so you get a sale and you take it away from him. Do not envy one another. Do not hate one another, but be slaves of Allah and brothers all together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا يَسْخَرْ قَوْمٌ مِنْ قَوْمٍ عَسَاءَ أَنْ يَقُونُ خَيْرًا مِنْهُمْ وَلَا نِسَاءٌ عَنْ نِسَاءٍ عَسَاءَ أَنْ يَقُنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهُنَّ وَلَا وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابُسُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ بِئْسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقَ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Allah says what means all you who believe. And again, everyone who wants to be a mu'min, a believer with Allah, should be all ears, listening, ready to take notes, mentally to implement. O you who believe, let not a group of you, from the men, scoff at another group, make fun of them, mock them, look down upon them. They may be better than you. And then, let not a group of you women, scoff at another group of women, looking down on other women, thinking you're better than them, making fun of them and mocking them. It may be that they're better than you. Do not defame one another. Do not insult one another or call each other by nicknames. How bad is it to insult one's brother after having faith? To call your Muslim brother or your Muslim sister some name, some something, يعني, like saying, calling them a sinner or calling them wicked or calling them evil or the likes of these matters. Allah saying this with His own speech. How shameful it is that we could call one another by these names. And whosoever does not repent from such a sin, then indeed they are the ظالمون. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الظَّنِّ إِنَّ بَعْضَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمٌ وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا يَغْطَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا أَنْ يُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوه وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah says what means, O you who believe, avoid much suspicion, indeed some suspicion is sin. Do not spy against one another. Do not backbite one another. Would any of you love to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate such a thing. You would detest it. This is the equivalent of this backbiting and this slandering that we do towards one another. It is like eating the flesh of your brother, your human brother. You would hate to do such a thing, so hate backbiting and fear Allah. Verily Allah is the one who accepts repentance and is most merciful. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, yeah, He said, وَاعْتَصُمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّخُوا And hold fast all of you together to the rope of Allah. هُوَ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ Al-Qur'an, يعني to the book of Allah, Kitab Allah, المبدود من السماء إلى الأرض, the book of Allah, the rope of Allah, outstretched from the heavens to the earth. فَتَمَسَّكُوا بِهِ Hold fast to that rope. وَلَا تَفَرَّخُوا And do not become divided, divided amongst yourselves. وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاءَ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ Then Allah continued in that ayah to say, Do not become divided. Hold on to that rope of Allah and remember Allah's favor upon you. You may have been enemies before, but He joined your hearts together under Tawheed under the correct aqidah, under this pure worshipping of Allah alone without any partners in truth, so that by His grace, His grace, you became brethren, you became brothers and sisters in faith, in tawheed, and you were on the brink of a pit of fire, misguided, astray, disarrayed by this dunya, and He led you to this and saved you from it. Thus Allah makes His ayat clear to you so that you may be guided. عن النعمان بن بشير رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ترى المؤمنين في تراحمهم وتوابهم وتعاطفهم كمثل الجسد إذا اشتكى عضوا تداعى له سائر الجسد بالشر والهمة والهمة رواه البخاري رسول محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يسأل عن أثناء الحديث you see the believers as regards to their being merciful amongst one another, and showing love amongst themselves, and being kind and generous and friendly, resembling one body, so that if one part of the body is not feeling well, then the whole body shares in sleeplessness, insomnia and fever in it. We can go on and on to give you the proofs from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. 
That we're not to hate one another, nor envy one another, nor cheat one another, nor look down upon one another, nor make one another feel lower than the other. This was a command from Allah and from His Messenger Wasallam. Allah made us brethren, brothers and sisters in faith under Tawheed, worshipping none but Him alone, without any partners. And yet we have turned on one another. Instead of following the command of Allah and His Messenger Wasallam. The ummah should be like a body. When you have a hang nail, a little piece of a nail, or an ingrown nail, a little piece of a nail growing into the skin of a finger or a toe. It's not even 1% of your body, yet it causes your body to wreak havoc. It increases your blood pressure. It causes you to increase your histamine. It causes you to not sleep, to not rest, to feel fever. And this is how the ummah should be, that even if one little part of this ummah felt some stress, some sadness, some hardship, then the rest of us should suffer in some way along with it. Yet we have left that because everything is about me, 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 and I, I, I. As many plan outrageous things, outrageous events to attend, whether it's because of a new year, or because of a birthday, or because of a wedding, or a funeral, or whatever it may be. Unfortunately, we see some Muslims being at the heads of these large, extravagant, way beyond what should be done types of events. We see Muslims at these things competing to outshine or outdo the other brother or sister that they're dealing with. Instead of command, following the command of what we were ordered with, to have humility, to be humble, to love for your brother what you love for yourself. That one of you, وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, he said that none of you completely or truly believes till he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And in another narration that he hates for his brother what he hates for himself. So despite the scenes around the world, despite the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, we've abandoned caring about one another and focused more on just caring about ourselves. Iyad bin Kimar radiallahu anhu he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, In Allah Ta'ala awha ilayya an tawadu hatta la yadghi ahadun ala ahad wa la yaskhara ahadun ala ahad. Ruwahu Muslim. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said in the authentic hadith, Verily Allah has revealed to me that you should adopt humility. Be humble. Lower your gaze. Hang down your head. Have humility. Because Allah is the one who gave you everything you have. Because its opposite is kibir, it is arrogance, and we're going to see about that shortly. Adopt humility so that no one can wrong another, and no one may be disdainful or haughty towards another. If you do not have humility, you will wrong people left and right. From your own family members, to your brothers and sisters in faith, to your neighbors, to everyone else who may have rights over you. By not having humility, you will wrong people. But the reality is we don't care for the most part to adopt humility and humbleness. We care what do people think of me? How do people look at me? Because the fact is we care more about impressing people in this dunya than impressing Allah. We care more that people will praise us and honor us in this dunya than Allah and His malaika, His angels, praising us and honoring us on a daily basis for attending prayers in the masajid and doing dhikr. This is the sad reality we felt to. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he reported that Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, مَن تَعَظَّمَ فِي نَفْسِهِ أَوْ إِخْتَالَ فِي مَشْيَتِهِ لَقِيَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ غَضْبَانِ Shaykh al-Albani, he authenticated this hadith in al-Adab al-Mufrat of al-Bukhari. He said that the Messenger, he said that Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, if anyone behaves insolently, if anyone behaves arrogantly or walks in an arrogant way, and this is a, a style you see sometimes some of these athletes and the like, they have that, that strut, that walk, that has so much arrogance, it's filthy to look at. Whoever does such a thing, he will meet Allah covered with Allah's anger. He will meet Allah covered with His anger because of puffing themselves up, because of their pride, because of their arrogance. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are nobody to put, a ped- to put ourselves on a pedestal, to puff ourselves up, to be so proud. 
We think we deserve things that we don't deserve. We think that things should not have come to us, yani hardship or whatever. That Allah, the best of the planners, Khayyul Makaleen, planned for us. This is the sad reality that we find ourselves in. Arrogance has no place in the heart of a believer. Anyone who wants to meet Allah, with Allah being pleased with him or her, cannot have arrogance or pride in their heart. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, in the يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَفْوًا He reported, لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالَ غَرَّةٍ مِنْ قِبْرٍ مِنْ كِبْرٍ فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ إِنَّ الرَّجُلُ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَكُونَ ثَوْتُهُ حَسَنًا وَنِعْنَهُ حَسَنًا قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَمِيلٌ يُحِبُّ الْجَمَالِ الْكِبْرِ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ وَغَمْقُ النَّاسِ رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه said, He who has in his heart, or she who has in her heart, an atom's weight. An atom is not even a thing you can see without a microscope. In some narrations, they'll say a mustard seed. Right? A mustard seed, if it's in your hand or on your shoulder, on your head, you don't even feel it. That's how light it is. Whoever has that little speck of arrogance or pride in their heart will not enter Jannah. So someone asks, a man likes to wear beautiful clothing and to wear nice shoes. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. Arrogance is not that you want to look good. If you're doing it to show off, you're into minor shirk, al riya and this is another major issue. Al-Riya is minor shirk. It is minor association of partners with Allah Azza wa To show off. But in this case, Allah said, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. He loves that you want to look beautiful, to dress in nice clothing, but don't go to a level of extravagance. And then the Prophet وسلم, he clarified what kibbit is, what arrogance is. He says it, is, it means ridiculing the, and rejecting the truth, like so many Muslims do with respect to the sunnah. Rejecting the sunnah. Because we don't do it this way back home, or because my father taught me this way, or because this is the way I was taught. Who cares? You've got that much pride to reject the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that some mashayikh, some scholars spent years of their lives, years, tens of years, 20, 30, 40 years, authenticating to make sure that what they are saying is sahih, is actually sahih. And we have the audacity to still turn the other way. What kind of pride do you have to turn away from the sunnah? This is the way of the best of mankind, something for all of kind to lead you on the straight path to make it to Jannah. Arrogance is rejecting the truth, mocking the truth, looking down on the truth, ridiculing the truth, and despising the people, looking down on the people. Looking down on the people. It was narrated from Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu he used to seek refuge with four things. كَانَ يَتَعَوَّدْ مِنْ أَرْبَعٍ مِنْ عِلْمٍ لَا يَنْفَعْ وَمِنْ قَلْبٍ لَا يَخْجَعْ وَدُعَاءٍ لَا يُسْمَعْ وَنَفْسٍ لَا تَشْدَعْ that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, would seek refuge with Allah from four things. And when he would seek refuge from things with Allah جل, it's because of their great evil and their great danger. So he would seek refuge from four. From a heart that does not feel humble. We seek refuge with hearts that would not feel humble. From a supplication that is not heard. From knowledge that does not benefit. And from a soul that is never satisfied. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, have humility. Be humble. The one who created you owns you and owns everything you have. And you will return to him to be questioned. You can do in this life to show off to the people, to impress the people. But if Allah isn't at the top of your I want to impress list, then you've got major issues to deal with in this life and in the next one. I warn you of this. The arrogance, the pride, the puffing oneself up, your hands don't earn what you get. In terms of the luxury you have in this life. This is all from Allah as a test to you. And as a trust to you. To see what you will do with your wealth and your provision. Do not put yourself up on a pedestal. Do not put yourself above people. Do not look down on the people. Because this arrogance has led them, those who Allah has blessed with so much, to mock and ridicule the Quran and the Sunnah. And we seek Allah's refuge with this. 
اقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ان الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم. ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستحيي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, ما نقصت صدقة من مال وما زاد الله عز عبدا بعفو إلا عزا وما تواضع أحد لله إلا رفعه الله. رواه مسلم. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, charity does not in any way decrease your wealth. When you give in charity, you might think that the number goes down, but in no way does it go down. In no way, whenever you spend in the path of Allah to feed someone, to give someone a drink, to help build something, to establish something, to help someone in need, in no way that does, that does that ever decrease your wealth. And the servant who forgives Allah, uh, Allah adds to his respect. The one who is forgiving of the people and pardoning of the people and doesn't hold grudges and lets things go, they earn the respect of Allah, and the one who shows humility, Allah will elevate him in status, in the estimation of the people. Allah will elevate him to a position of honor because of him being someone who is humble and has humility. Ka'ad ibn Iyad, he narrated, anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فِتْنَةٍ وَفِتْنَةُ أُمَّةِ الْمَالِ رَوَاهُ التِّرْمَذِي وَهَذَا حَدِيثٌ صَحِيحٌ Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, indeed, there is a fitna for every ummah, and the fitna for my ummah is wealth. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is really worrisome, extremely disheartening to see the state that our ummah is in. We always want to ask, why does this happen, or why is this happening to us? Why is Jerusalem not in the hands of the Muslims? Why are the Muslims suffering in Burma, in China, in Africa, in Yemen, in Syria, <clears throat> in Palestine, in Afghanistan, and all across the Muslim world, in India and the likes. Why do we continue to see our ummah failing or falling into major harms like intoxicants, like gambling, like riba, like interest and usury, even competing for status and fame and wealth? Even those who would, yeah, who's going to throw the biggest wedding or the best of the weddings, even competing in the ways when it comes to funerals, even competing in the ways of who will get the most expensive car, despite Allah Azza wa Jal saying, in the Mubadirin Kanu Uswan Shayateen, that the ones who are extravagant in the way they spend their wealth are the brothers of Shaitan, are the brothers of the devils. The answer is very simple and clear. Observe it and you will see the taqwa is missing. In the Akramukum Aindallahi Atakum, the best of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. The one who keeps his duty to Allah the best. It doesn't mean you won't sin. You will sin, but rush to Allah with repentance and look to do good deeds and look to leave the bad and the evil that you may be upon. And try and struggle, and Allah will reward you. First and foremost, being firm upon Tawheed and the Aqidah of our righteous predecessors, the creed of our righteous predecessors, the Salaf al Salih. Do this, and you will find that things will improve. The Masajid are here, but they're empty, sometimes closed, or abandoned for the most part. Ibn Mas'ud, what did he say? He said, وَإِنْ صَلَّيْتُمْ فِي بَيُوتِكُمْ كَمَا يُصَلِّ الْمُتَخَلَّ فِي بَيْتِ إِذَا تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيُّكُمْ وَإِنْ تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيُّكُمْ لَضَلَّتُمْ He said, if you were to pray in your homes like the lazy people do, the people who have left off the masajid because of laziness, if you were to pray in your homes like they do, you would have definitely left the sunnah of your messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whoever abandons the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he has gone astray. We will go and spend thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a wedding or a funeral, on a home and a car. But when it comes to helping out our brothers and sisters, or humanity, regardless of their deen, you all of a sudden are broke or tied up. We're envious, we're jealous, we're always wanting, we're never satisfied, we're always looking to those who have things more than us, not looking at how blessed we are because we look at those below us. كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم انظروا إلى من هو أسفل منكم ولا تنظروا إلى من هو فوقكم فإنه أجدر أن لا تزدر نعمة الله عليكم. As the Prophet said in the authentic hadith, look at those below you, look at those with less health, 
less wealth, less happiness, less family, less everything. Do not look at those above you, those who may have more of what you have in terms of wealth or status or, or family or in the likes of the, or health. Because when you do so, you belittle the favors that Allah has given you, belittle the blessings that Allah has blessed you with. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we hate, we envy, we look down, we backbite, we slander. And we have abandoned what we've been called to as Muslims, to have mercy, to have humility, to be humble, to be modest. It's all about me, it's not a Muslim phrase. Nafsi, nafsi, me, 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 is not a Muslim phrase except on Yom Al-Qiyam. That's when you'll be concerned about yourself and you won't give about what's happening to anybody else. But it's all about me, I just care about me, I'm just going to take care of me. This ain't a Muslim phrase. This is a selfish and greedy phrase. Caring for oneself doesn't belong in the heart of a Muslim. Where's the love for the ummah and why does it only show up if there's a massive calamity? Then we'll respond. So keep this in mind, how can we just look at the change of a year, or a birthday, or an Eid, or whatever it may be as something significant when it won't change a thing for us, nor the lives of many, suffer, many suffering across the globe. We were ordered to have humility, to be humble, to not be arrogant, to not boast, to not be proud, and yet we're doing the opposite of what we were commanded to do. Allah, He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Wa'ad, He said, Indeed, Allah will not change the condition of a people, good or bad, away from that until they change what is in themselves. So if you're upon what is good and correct, tawheed, the correct aqeedah, establishing your prayers, coming to the masajid, paying your zakat, fasting in Ramadan, etc., etc., then Allah won't change the good condition you're in. But if you're upon evil, Allah will not change you away from the hardships and the evils you're going through until you abandon that evil, abandon that sin, abandon that that position that you're upon, that way that you're upon. So let's keep it real. Let us return to reality. Let us return to humility. Let us return to being humble as we were commanded. And let us return to humanity. Until we are firm upon the straight path, then this message has to be the same. A reminder of what we need to earn Allah's pleasure. Man la nas, la Allah azza wa jal. As the Prophet he said, Whoever does not show mercy to the people, then Allah will not show mercy to him or her. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, for some time now, <coughs> we were looking for some of the brothers that we know in here to do something in somewhere we haven't done anything yet, because we tend to help many of the countries that we have strong ties to. And we have some family members in our community from Somalia. Did you know that in one year, over a million people died due to drought in the 90s and I think believe 2006. And that there are tens of thousands who died due to drought being the initial cause, if not the cause. Drought not having water. <clears throat> so when we know that we have someone entrusted, someone we can trust, where the money that we collect will go to do what it's meant to do, what we collect it for, then we want to embark and we want to ch share and we want to spread that love across the ummah. Because water, we let it run by taking half an hour to hour showers. Water, we dump the ones who take care of the masajid, dump bottles every day that have this much sift, even though the bottle is this big. We waste water left and right so we can enjoy green grass and, and nice trees and the likes of this and our fruits can grow. And there are some who are our brothers and sisters in faith who have nothing like that. Maybe to the point of having to make tayammum more than they make wudu because they don't have water. So we can do something about that. We got from Amud Relief and Development Foundation where our brothers had some communication with them and we've been planning this for a while and then the, the earthquake came up in Turkey and Syria and so we focused on that and then we waited some time in Ramadan. It's sad. If we were to fundraise every week, we should be happy. Because Allah is giving us a chance to give what He gave us to give it back. Because we know we ain't going to stay here forever. And it's all a trust from Him. A well with a generator. I'll send the pictures on the, on the WhatsApp community list. A well with a generator in the tank. Coming up to drinking fountains and faucets. is $5,000. That's for everything. If you want your name written on it, if you sponsor the whole thing, your name will be written on it. Anything we collect today for the masjid and I'll extend it. With a, with a message until maybe Saturday night or so, 
will go towards this to establishing wells in Somalia. This is $5,000. It can be used by up to 200 families a day. And many of these are in small villages, near schools. Look what you'll be able to do. This is a true sadaqa jariya, a true ongoing charity that you can give, helping give water to those who do not have it. Or those who have to sit there and pull up a bucket. Now, we can have one of those wells, if you want to do one of those in the more rural areas where the nomads are, it's $3,500. Alright? But, make sure that you contribute today. We will do a brief fundraiser after the salah, a brief fundraiser after the prayer. Give what you can, all of it will add up. Anything we collect through the masjid, through Sunday night, we'll just call it at midnight, we'll go towards establishing wells in Somalia for our brothers and sisters to have water to drink, to bathe with, to cook, to feed their livestock and their animals and, their, and then water their trees and their plants. May Allah accept it from us, may we be, be of those who help the Ummah and never envy or hate or despise or look down upon one another. Allahumma fil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat al-Ahyaat minhum wa al-Amwat innaka al-Tismi'un al-Qalib al-Majib al-Da'awat ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulub al-Ala dinik ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulub al-Ala dinik ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulub al-Ala dinik subhana rabbika rabbil izzati wa ma yasifun wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala al-Mina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi Oh, I